After the RB19 won 21 out of 22 races in 2023, I think it's fair to say that fans were anticipating with both eagerness and maybe a little bit of fear to see what Adrian Newey and the whole Red Bull design team had cooked up for 2024. Now, like many, I was expecting just an evolution of last year's car, with perhaps the team trying to make the car a little bit stronger in qualifying and also less sensitive over the bumps, which, to be honest, were the only two weaknesses, if you can even call them that, which affected them last year and which made them lose out on their only race win of the season. But no, as Max Verstappen himself put it, the team's mindset was quite literally the opposite. I do like what the team has done. It's not a conservative car. It's not like last year was a great car, we'll just add a few bits and try to make it a little bit faster. I do think they've been quite bold, and that's what I like. They've been quite aggressive. And now, it must be said right from the outset that the car at the launch had a whole bunch of things either hidden or, in some cases, straight up not on the car. The floor, for example, was fake. You can see from the pictures and videos that it had absolutely no detail on it, even compared to last year, and it looked like something straight off a show car. This goes for pretty much every single team, but it's just something to keep in mind that we won't really see everything that the RB20 has to offer until we see the car hit the track in preseason testing in Bahrain next week. The three main changes that had everyone talking are the front nose, radiator inlets, and the shoulder style bodywork on the engine cover. The main reason why these things have been talked about as much as they have isn't necessarily just because each of them is a departure from the all conquering RB19 but more so because they closely resembled the launch spec of Mercedes' 2023 car, which even they developed away from during the early part of last season. Starting at the nose, last year it only went as low as the second to last wing element, which left a gap between the bottom of the nose and the lowest portion of the front wing, which allowed the air to be directly channeled under the nose and into the floor. This year the nose now stretches all the way down to the lowest possible element compared to last year, with that specific airflow now being directed over the nose and over the top of the car towards the radiators and those bulky shoulders. And next up, we get to the side pods. Right from the beginning, Red Bull have opted to change from last year, where instead of the bottom part of the inlet extending further outwards, now it's the top part of the inlet that extends the most towards the front. Then we get to arguably the biggest major change, when it comes to the actual air inlet itself leading into the side pods, although it was hidden in the renders, on the launch car, very grainy photos taken by people in low light conditions, which I'm sure was not an accident by Red Bull, show that the radiator inlet was now vertical instead of horizontal. Further back, even though the side pods stick out a little bit more now, they are also now slimmer and have also been allowed to have a more aggressive undercut below the side pod and a more aggressive downwash at the top of the side pod. This aggressive packaging, as with every single team, means that there is now even more critical cooling demands on the power unit. And that has directly led to the next major change, which is the cannons that run along the engine cover from the halo and allow for more of the hot air to be directed out of the car. Even here, Red Bull have tried to utilize it as an aerodynamic surface, and so, in between the cannons and the top of the engine cover, there is a tunnel-like surface which again channels the air that runs over the top of the car towards the back of the floor and the diffuser. This tunnel is actually quite substantial, and it's also the reason why the Red Bull logo on the back of the engine cover actually doesn't look that clear as the legs of the ball drop into this tunnel. If any of these changes look familiar to you, then they should, because they are all things that the launch spec of the Mercedes W14 had last year. Mercedes's nose last year went down all the way to the lowest possible element, their evolved zero pod design also had a vertical air inlet, and it also prominently featured the cannons on the engine cover as well. In complete contrast to the brand new W15, all of those things have now been changed, Mercedes have now added a slot gap below the nose, gone to a more conventional air intake design, and have ditched the cannons in favor of a slimmer engine cover compared to Red Bull. And now, whilst it would be fun to imagine that Red Bull are trying to pull off some kind of 3D chess move by purposefully choosing a failing Mercedes concept just to then go and beat them with it, in reality, the team maintains that these changes have come about because of their performance benefits, with Horner saying, 
It's based on performance and what we're seeing through our simulation tools. Obviously, the car looks quite visibly different to last year in certain areas. Only the stopwatch will tell, but in the virtual world, we wouldn't have committed it to design if we didn't feel it was better. And now, whilst all of these visual aero changes are going to get a lot of people talking, I think it's just worth reiterating that as much as Red Bull have been pioneers on the aero side and have caused most of the teams to replicate and deviate towards them, even Adrian Newey admits that Red Bull's core advantage isn't necessarily what we see on the top mounted surfaces. It's more so to do with their suspension and floor design and how they work in combination to create a stable aero platform that works across a range of ride heights and that can exploit all of that downforce that's generated by the car. If we go back to 22, the reason why Mercedes stuck with their basic concept and carried it over into 23 was because the team were adamant that it had lots of aero potential that just wasn't able to be exploited because the ride height and bouncing was causing the car to be unstable. And now just to clarify, porpoising and bouncing are actually two different things. Yes, Mercedes solved their porpoising issues in 23, but their disqualification in Austin showed that they still didn't fully understand how close they could run their car to the ground and how much the bouncing would cause the plank to wear. That is something that Red Bull realized in Spa. Having peak downforce is great, and if your wind tunnel is telling you that your concept is generating lots of theoretical downforce in optimal conditions, then that's what you see. But if you can't use that downforce across a range of tracks, conditions, and ride heights, then it's not necessarily usable downforce. To be fair, that is exactly what we saw from Mercedes last season. In certain conditions and under certain ride heights, that car did have lots of performance even compared to the Red Bull on tracks like Hungary and Austin. But then on other tracks like Sao Paulo, that car was a borderline disaster that struggled to score points with both of its drivers. And even the team admitted that even if they had the option, they wouldn't know what changes to make to fix it. Red Bull have proven that with their floor and suspension, they can create a stable aero platform. There's a very good reason why the team during last season wanted to hide their floor as much as they did, and why the RB20 launch car didn't have the real floor at all. What that means is that perhaps the abandoned Mercedes-ish concept does generate more downforce than even their previous one on the RB19, but unlike Mercedes, they actually have the mechanical platform to fully utilize its potential. All of this makes the hotly anticipated RB20 now even more hotly anticipated for us to see the full package when it hits the track in Bahrain. At this point, despite the team already shaking the car down in Silverstone, no one really knows how all of that is going to come together in 2024 and how it's going to stack up against the others. As a fan, despite the slight worry that this car might just go on and win all 24 races this time around, it's that anticipation of the unknown and the hope for a more competitive title fight that makes me so excited around this time of year, season after season. Well, there you have it. If you did enjoy this video and want to support the channel, then don't forget to subscribe. That would be massively appreciated, and I'll see you in the next one.